Following in the footsteps of YouTube greatness, Daniel over at the Dungeon Dive, I thought it'd be fun to put together a little holiday gift guide. So let's tear into this. Socks? What the fuck? Welcome to Solitary RPG. In this video, we're gonna talk about some holiday gift ideas that aren't actual like box board games. Accessories are probably more practical to give gamers because if we want a game, we just go out and buy it. These are kind of odd things that we may not buy just simply because we're not sure about them. Let's dive into this. If you have a gamer in your life that remembers the good old days of the old red box and blue box, and has nostalgia for those original dice, well, Wizards of the Coast, with the release of their new version of D&D and the 50th anniversary, have been releasing some kind of cool stuff, like product stuff, and they re-released the dice. This is a cool little set. It's just your standard set of dice. However, these are sharp edge dice, and they're larger than the original dice. So it's kind of cool. And you get your standard dice, and I, I pulled them out already, uh, but you get like this little marker. So if you want to use a marker to fill in the uh, numbers, or you get a cheap crayon <laughs> that you can use to fill in your dice, but it's black. Uh, I, I recall my set being white, um, but either way, you, know, you can probably, if you want to go with white, you can just go get a little box of crayon and fill them in with white. This is just a cool little gift you could give to a newer gamer that so that they can experience what it was like to fill in the dice with crayon or the nostalgia gamer that just recalls the good old days and this is just a nice little set of dice. I don't think they're anything special outside of just a cheap plastic set of dice that just rolled a one so um, that rolled a two. Can I get a three? No, nope, went to a six. But yeah, just a fun little set of dice. Um, it was $19.99 at my local game store, Imperial Post Gaming. And it's just a cool little gift to give the gamer in your life. But now that we have dice, well, we need a dice tray to roll them in. I want to introduce you to the wooden shut the box for four player dice tray. So I picked this up at a home goods store for $14.99. Why, what is this and why did I get this? One of my favorite YouTube channels to watch is Bandit's Keep. His live play videos are really cool. And he has this unique dice tray with these numbers that you flip up for tracking initiative. His is different. It's not uh, four-sided like this one. But it is a neat dice tray for tracking initiative. So let me pull this out of the box and show you what it looks like. So Shut the Box is a game, so I guess technically uh, this would fall into that category as a game, but I'm not going to use it as a game. I'm going to use it as a dice tray. It does, does come with two wooden dice, which is neat. I, I guess the idea for Shut the Box is you roll the dice, and that was a six, so you flip your numbers, and you're trying to flip all your numbers, but you go one through ten. I don't know what you do with eleven and twelve, but I'm not playing Shut the Box. Uh, this is a cool little way of a dice tray, but you can also track initiative of the encounters, or you could actually use this to track hit points. You, you know, even though it only goes to 10, you can always put dice in these little corners to represent higher numbers. Um, so let's say we've got a monster that has 20 hit points. Maybe we put a, a 20 here, and then we start our countdown. Um, going up to 10 and then it goes down to 10 and you can go again to go to 20. You'd use it for that or you can just use it for tracking initiative maybe with a bigger group. Bandit Keep does it. He's playing solo so he only has one of the trackers on one side but if you're playing in a party maybe you have a group of people, you have four players they can each flip their initiative so that you know when they're supposed to go and it's just a way of keeping track and then all the dice are rolled in here and you can actually use the little corners to represent their hit points if you wanted to. But yeah, it's just a cool dice tray. You know, I make dice trays a lot. I'm actually thinking about pulling the felt out or just gluing a, an image on top of this 
and then pouring resin in here to give it an image and that way the dice bounce better. Um, I, I don't really care. I like, I like to hear the clanking of dice in a dice tray, but that's a later on thing. And also since I do play solo, I might be removing one set of these completely. So this way I have a place to put all my dice. So I can just put all my dice in one place and then use this for tracking initiative and HP. But this is just one of those really unique gifts that most gamers, like I've seen these things before online and I've thought about it, but when I saw one in person and I really saw the size of it, I'm like, that's a cool dice tray size. And the, the system, I was like, okay, I'll pick it up. And it was $15 at a home goods store. Really not a bad price if you ask me. So yeah, so now we have a dice tray for rolling our classic D&D dice in them. And it's just a neat little holiday gift idea for the gamer in your life. Now we're gonna talk about Lord of Maps. So have you ever had a product idea in your head? You're like, man, someone should really make this product. I think it'd be really cool on the market. Well, I had that idea and Lord of Maps stole it from me. They are inside my head, stealing my ideas to make profit. And I'm okay with it because I would never do anything with it. I've always thought, why don't we take mapping, like the mountains and the um, uh, rivers and trees and all that and just make them stamps so we can just stamp them on a piece of paper so we can create a map quickly on, on the fly at our table and they've done it. This is their first release. Let me get this book out of the way. It's Lord of Maps. You can find them on the internet. I will put a link in the description if you're interested. But you have a few mountain sets, trees, a lake, a little compass design if you so desire. But you can literally just stamp this on a piece of paper and you're good to go. They give you this book with like practice maps in it. So you can just like photocopy these and just mess around with them. They're just little practice maps, nothing too exciting. Some of them are kind of unique, like a skull, the United States of America, a bear. That'd be kind of cool for a continent. Uh, humans uh, or person, someone getting eaten. So they just got these kind of unique little map designs in this book so that you can practice a hand you need to erase half that index finger and make it my hand and flip it around uh anyways so yeah you got this cool this is the probably the most you know easiest way is just get a blank something and just start stamping on it but yeah just neat nothing you know these are just for practice so what i did is i photocopied one on my printer I got an ink pad that I use. I do a lot of stamping in my journaling, my personal journaling for certain aspects. So I have stamps readily available for other things. And you can just grab one of your stamps. This is the tree. Hit your ink pad and we'll put our tree right there. Up, oh, ink it up better. My ink pad might be running out of ink. And there's a set of trees like how cool is this? This is just simple. It's easy. I want to put some, so you got two different types of mountains. We got our standard like run of the mill mountains, but then we have like a volcano, a bluff and more peaky type mountains. So these would be up in more of a drier climate and there are my mountains. Like I can just make a quick map on the table without having to draw it, uh, without having to look through a bunch of books, trying to find a map. I can just stamp, let's say the river's right here. Boom, we got a little lake. I don't have a river, I got a lake. And then I could just draw, you know, things coming off of it to represent a river. But, you know, around water, we would have more trees. Make sure your ink pad is good and inked up. And then there's also this little like individual tree. So if you're really wanting to go nuts and create all kinds of uh, forest yourself, you got this little tree and maybe we just sprinkle some around the, the tree cluster just to represent, you know, the lightning of trees. Like this is the main forest, but maybe you get lighter trees going into it. So it's just a little bit of a different 
set up on the table, but you know, you've got a map set up relatively quickly of saying, hey, you got to go through this forest, this lake, to the peaks, and you're good to go. This is probably one of those gifts that most people might not buy for themselves. It was $42, but it's really practical and kind of fun uh, to make your own maps. Um, I can just grab a piece of paper at the table and plot out some stuff real quick for my sandbox world that I don't have a pre-designed map and just go to town. I'm hoping Lord of Maps really expands on this idea. This one is basically, you know, trees, a lake, and some mountains. I'm hoping they do like maybe a castle release in the future or city release. Like just give me some, some physical structures, like a couple towers, a couple villages, and a couple castles and really expand on it. Give me a couple different lake designs. I just think this is a great concept because now at the table with my box of, of stamps, if we're doing like a sandbox, boom, I can stamp something out real quick and you know, if this was hex paper, we could actually have everything we needed for adventuring, overland adventure. Last thing I want to talk about are like blind bags or gambling bags. These are really hard to show on camera, even though I'm adjusting my light. Uh, they're just so reflective because it's gold. Um, these are just great stocking stuffers or giving to uh, someone at the office that you know is in uh, gaming. You may not know what type of gaming they're into as far as RPG goes, or even board games go. And this is just a fun gift because, well, you, you get some cool stuff. You don't know what you're going to get in the pack, and there's like rarities and stuff. These are the more elaborate of the blind things because these have like a pouch and a coin and some dice. They also just make blind dice packs like this. These are just fun to give away to people. And as gamers, we enjoy adding dice to our collection. Even though we know we have too many dice in our life, we still like to buy more dice. Oh, this one's gonna be for my wife because it's this nice pink color. And um, pink doesn't look good on me, so I don't wear pink. But <laughs> these are gonna be her dice also. Uh, this is like a candy colored dice. So these are kind of cool. And this is what happens when you get these. You just don't know what you're going to get. And I got a little cool uh, hexagon. Which one did I get? Uh, Blade Song. So you get these little coins in this. This one is different. This is silky. Oh, look at these dice. Oh, these are pretty. These are my dice. And these are just plastic dice. They aren't anything special but these are pretty cool i really like the look of these dice oh those are cool let's see what coin i got oh what is this one divine intervention that is really neat again it has the D, &D symbol on one side and then you got whatever the coin is and that's divine intervention i really like that one and this bag is kind of got a silky feel to it like okay it's kind of cool but it's green and i like green so i'll use that and what i like using these for is just sorting out like when i have special sets of dice i will keep them in these bags individually um, just for that except the pink one that one's going to go to my wife and these are just fun to open so you can give one of these to a friend oh, a blue one that is same silky kind of material so this is what's coming in the new set what is the, bat, the, the coin we got? So we got the bard, it says cutting words, and then the bottom it says D10. And then I got a, another set of dice. But these are just fun little stocking stuffers to give a loved one that's into gaming. You can just get a variety of different ones. They make high-end rock ones with like stone dice or glass dice. Like they make a lot of these different packages. People have YouTube channels just opening these products, which is, you know something i actually enjoy watching uh but yeah so that's what this is all about so let me clear this out of the way so this was just a fun little video talking about some different gift ideas that you can give that gamer in your life neat little dice tray for tracking initiative and hit points some retro dice from D D. Lord of Maps, really cool mapping concept that you can stamp your map right at the table while you're playing in your sandbox world. 
uh, just to keep your game moving along. Then these little blind package, uh, you know, they make blind dice and um, all kinds of different little blind package things uh, for throwing in the stocking or giving a coworker at work that you're just quite not quite sure what to pick up for them. Uh, fun little gift ideas. And one other thing you can always do that all gamers love is get them a gift certificate for their local friendly game store so that they can just go in there and buy what they want. Um, gamers kind of know what they like and kind of know what they want and gift certificates, even though they're not personal, they're just kind of like the easy button to give somebody. But it is the holiday season. So let's just uh, celebrate with our family and friends. Let's welcome in the new year and start 2025 off with a bang. So thank you very much and have a great day.